I'm employing the John Armstrong paradigm in the title of my video here, Harvey and Lee, uh, not to endorse his entire uh, theory about about uh, the imposter, but I do think there was an imposter. I think he's right about that. And I think the Thanksgiving uh, Day 1962 events demonstrate that there was an imposter and that he was carefully presented, the imposter was, to the Dallas Russian community so that they would know the imposter and not Lee. That Thanksgiving, the Oswald family gathered at Robert's house. Thanksgiving Day, November 22nd, 1962, we are all having a pleasant holiday atmosphere. Everybody's getting along fine. And Lee didn't seem under any particular strain, no indication of any particular problems. And of course, that was Robert Oswald with the creepy music from the, from that PBS show. I think it was, uh, who was Lee Harvey Oswald? I, I forget the name of it. But uh, I'm sure you've seen it if you're watching this. And Robert's uh, telling of the story is very consistent between his various statements and his testimony to the Warren Commission. So I'm going to use this FBI uh, report because it's very succinctly put here. Robert Lee Oswald, 1009 Sierra, employed sales coordinator, coordinator Acme Brick Company, Denton, Texas, advised that he recalled the occasion, Thanksgiving 1962, believed to be November 22nd, 1962, when he and his brother, John Edward Pick, went to the Greyhound bus station in Fort Worth and picked up his brother, Lee Harvey Oswald, his wife and children, and that they returned to his, Robert Lee Oswald's home, 713 Davenport Street, where they had Thanksgiving dinner. He advised that Lee Harvey Oswald and his family arrived at the Greyhound bus station at approximately 10 a.m., and that they remained at his home until approximately 4 p.m. He stated that this time he stated that at this time either Mr. Paul Gregory or his son Paul Gregory Jr. Uh, came by and picked up Lee Harvey Oswald and his wife and children, and that they left presumably to return to their Dallas address. Uh, one mistake here is that the father's name is Peter Gregory, and the son's name is Paul Gregory, and you should note he doesn't remember which one it was. And uh, also he's saying children for Lee when Lee has only one child at this time. But other than that, uh, the story is very uh, consistent from Robert. And brother John Edward Pick's statements are also very consistent with each other, but they're not consistent with Robert's statements. Uh, so I'm going to read. This is also the, from his earliest uh, FBI uh, interview on the topic. Sergeant Pick stated that he and his wife and children went to Fort Worth, Texas in November 1962 to spend the Thanksgiving holidays with Robert Lee Edward Oswald and his family. At that time, Robert Lee Edward Oswald Jr. was living in the 7000 block of Davenport Street in Fort Worth. Sergeant Pick said that he and his family visited there from Thanksgiving Day 1962 until the following Sunday when they returned to San Antonio, Texas. So a little more information from Pick is that he stayed beyond Thanksgiving Day until Sunday. Sergeant Pick stated that on the morning of Thanksgiving Day 1962, Robert Lee Edward Oswald Jr. informed him that Lee Harvey Oswald and his wife and infant daughter were also coming over at about 1 p.m. or 2 p.m. that day Sergeant Pick and Robert went to the Greyhound bus station in Fort Worth, Texas, met Lee Harvey Oswald and his family as they came out of the station and took them to Robert's house. Now, here's one conflict with the statement of uh, Robert. Robert says they, they went to the bus to get them, the bus stop to get them at 10 a.m., whereas uh, uh, John Edward Pick here says 1 or 2 p.m., and in later statements, he, he settles more on 2 p.m. So there's a four-hour difference there uh, that uh, conflicts with uh, Brother Robert. 
Sergeant Pick said he did not know where Lee Harvey Oswald and his family had come from, but presumed they had come over from Dallas, Texas, as he believed they were living in Dallas at the time. Sergeant Pick stated Lee Harvey Oswald, his wife, Marina, and their young daughter stayed at Robert's house until about 6 or 7 p.m. Thanksgiving Day, 1962. And if you... Uh, if you look at uh, Robert's statement, he says they left around 4 p.m. And in others, to the Warren Commission, he says it was before dark. So here's another conflict in their statements. Uh, Robert says Oswald said, says Lee left at 4 p.m. And Robert says, and uh, Pick says the names, and Pick says 7 p.m. So there's a three-hour difference there. At which time they left in the company of a man, name unknown, who came by for them. So Pick does not know the Gregories. Pick said he was told this man, whom he was able to describe only as white, rather tall, dark hair, dark complexion, possibly 25 to 28 years old, was studying Russian at some school in the state of Oklahoma, possibly the University of Oklahoma. And he only met him for a couple minutes. So you might not expect him to have a, a good description of him a year later, but that description isn't quite right for, uh, uh, for Paul Gregory either. And the other account we have, allegedly, of this event comes from Paul Gregory. Uh, he talked to the Warren Commission, and uh, he says, And I saw them once more, if you are interested. So note here that the Warren Commission was not asking him about this event. He volunteered this. And I saw them once more, if you are interested. That was probably the Friday or Saturday after Thanksgiving, which, of course, is not the same day that the other two say, of 1962. Marina called up. I was home for vacation, and she said that she and Lee were at Robert Oswald's house for Thanksgiving dinner or something, and she wanted me to come over and pick them up and have the visit, and I would take them down to the bus station because they rode the bus over from Dallas. They had since then moved to Dallas, and I went and picked them up and brought them back to our house, and we had sandwiches, and I took them down to the bus station, and that was the last time I saw them. Now, if you want this to not mean anything, it's easy enough to just dismiss it as differing memories because people's memories will differ. But uh, I don't think that's the best explanation here. Uh, this is a special meeting for the three Oswald brothers because John Pick has not seen Lee for 10 years. And uh, I don't know how long it has been for Robert, but I think it's been a while for Robert. No, Robert had seen him recently because he had just moved back uh, from Russia recently. But uh, it's the last time they saw him, too. So I think this is something that's going to be fairly clear in their memories. So I think that uh, one of them, one of the Robert or Pick is lying, and I think it's Robert because the only way it can make sense as a lie is as if the, the three real brothers are together on Thanksgiving Day, but they're not the three brothers when uh, Paul Gregory comes to pick up Lee. And it's a little complex, so I wrote this out for myself here. There is a Lee Oswald and an imposter. The real Lee visits on Thanksgiving Day with his brothers. They pick him up at the bus station at 2 p.m., and somebody, not Paul Gregory, picks him up in the afternoon after dark. And as I noted in there, John Pick had never met Paul Gregory before or after and had a very vague memory of him. So it could have been somebody other than Paul Gregory if Robert and Marina are in on what's going on here. But Robert alters the story regarding the times of day in order to match the time of day that Paul Gregory came to get Lee. He wants his story to seem consistent with Gregory's. Robert's story acts as a bridge between John Pick's story and Paul Gregory's. Gregory says that it was the day after, and he probably knows because he probably had dinner with his own family on Thanksgiving. 
and the point is to show only the imposter Oswald to the Dallas Russians, and only the real Oswald to John Pick. John Pick is not in the loop, so what they're trying to do here is make it seem to John Pick as if this really is his brother, and it really is, because on Thanksgiving Day, Lee Harvey Oswald really is there. But when Paul Gregory comes to pick them up, it might not even be the same house. It might not even be the same people. Paul Gregory doesn't know these people. He only knows Marina and the person he knows is Lee Harvey Oswald, who is the imposter. So he doesn't know any of these other people at this time. And shortly after that, he does meet Robert. So I think probably it really was Robert there when Paul Gregory came by. And it was really Marina there when Paul Gregory came by. But it was not really Pick, and it was not Lee Harvey Oswald, it was the imposter. That's kind of complex, isn't it? You have to think about it for a while. But that's how it could have been done. So this ruse sort of, it, 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 it ostensibly uh, confirms that this is the real Lee Harvey Oswald, because there he is with his two brothers, and of course his brothers know him. It's not the imposter, is what this sort of, I think it's, this is intended to prove that. But it's a trick, because, uh, because it's not really Paul Gregory who comes by to pick up the real Lee Harvey Oswald. And I think we can see this uh, in part of what Pick says about the event. And down here at the bottom here in, in Pick's testimony, Lee spoke to him in Russian? Yes, sir. Except when he was introducing you to him, he introduced you in English as his half-brother? Well, Lee would speak to him in part Russian, part English. He was only there maybe a couple of three minutes. I had the impression that this gentleman could speak Russian better than Lee. What gave you that impression? Because Lee wouldn't converse fully with him in Russian, whereas him and Marina did converse fully in Russian. So Pick is saying that the visitor, who supposedly is Paul Gregory, speaks, apparently he speaks Russian very well, much better than Lee does. But Lee Harvey Oswald, according to the Dallas Russians, speaks fluent Russian. Uh, not perfect Russian, they say he has grammar problems, but he can communicate fully in Russian. He doesn't have to go back and forth with English. So I think this shows that the Lee Harvey Oswald that the Dallas Russians knew was not the brother that John Pick knew. And so that supports this idea that I'm putting forward here, that uh, there were two different pickup events at Thanksgiving dinner, and the one that Lee Harvey Oswald was at was not the one that Paul Gregory went to. He went the next day or the day after that, and he picked up the imposter, uh, well, well, at least uh, John Pick was not there. Now, John Pick said he stayed for the weekend, so I think this might even have happened at a different house. It might be that Paul Gregory had never been to the house before or never went there afterwards. So I think the best explanation for the contradictions in, of these three accounts of what happened is that there were two different pickup events and one of them uh, involved the real Lee Harvey Oswald and John Pick and uh, Robert Oswald. And the other one uh, did not involve John Pick, but probably Robert Oswald was there too. Though not necessarily, because I don't think uh, Paul Gregory even knew Robert Oswald at all. And also, I think it's clear from Mr. Jenner's uh, questioning here that he understands that there's a contradiction and that he is uh, going through the motions here, but he doesn't want to probe too deeply. He doesn't want to highlight the contradiction, but I think he might not know exactly what's going on either. So what it means is that, is that the Dallas Russians knew the imposter. They didn't know the real Lee Harvey Oswald. It means that John Pick had no idea what was going on, and it means that Marina did, 
presumably Lee and the imposter did, and it looks like probably Robert also knew that something was going on. Not that they're planning the murder of the president, but that something is going on. 